four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, I missed a bit, seventeen. Thirty-six for the window. Yep. Thirty-six feet of distance travel in order to get a rinse on a, on very hydrophobic glass. Now if let's say from an agitation point of view, they had to agitate first as well, right? But if we agitate and rinse, right, so we go up, down, up, down, and then we come up, down, up, down, and it's done. Come up, down, up, down. A different kind of efficiency. <laughs> yeah. Now if you watch, if I go over here and I do this kind of rinse here, right, and you look at the how much water is left on the glass, so the beads are smaller, in some places there are no beads. Yeah. So when pollen season comes along and it's blowing into the wind, then you can imagine with that many beads and that bigger bead because the surface tension of the water is holding the bead on the glass, right? So the next thing we're working on is an additive for constructor brush that'll break the surface tension of even these beads. So my goal is that there is no beads that are going to be left on the glass from the downstroke. Right, so you see the run of water? If you pull down faster than gravity, then the water will turbulate under the brush. So here's the logic. When you have pencil jets, you have to chase the dirty water off the glass. Yeah? When you have constructor brush, the bottom bristles, because these are not these are not bristles that are drilled every three eighths of an inch. These are blades, right? You, the water doesn't get back up through that brush. So that downstroke pulls the dirty water off under the brush. So it's like a squeegee. Like a squeegee. And then this leaves your pure water on. So that's your that's your polish rather than rather than trying to chase the dirty water off the